Uh, right, good uh, good evening everybody, I think it is now, isn't it? Because I was supposed to start at 4 o'clock, it's now uh, well past 5 o'clock. The good news is I'll probably try and keep this presentation a little bit shorter because I realise it's probably your bedtime story now as much <laughs> as opposed to anything else. Um, and um, I'm not sure how much of a background you've been given about the people who are speaking uh, this week. Uh, so I'll just introduce myself a little bit. I, I, I'm a lecturer at the University of Essex and uh, I know Evangelos maybe mainly through the... Uh, the Academy of Marketing, where we are both on the uh, the e-marketing special interest group. Thankfully, I'd like to. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm quite thankful for the opportunity to be here because I'm in a room full of social media enthusiasts, as opposed to e-marketers. And I differentiate the two because uh, you guys, and it's an exciting time to be studying social media because you guys are essentially one of the first group of people who are specialising in that field. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of my own research over the last decade or so, um, not more than a decade, I'm not that old, uh, and what I've done and, and how it sort of led me towards social media. And the reason I wanted to do that is not to sort of brag about my own research or anything like that, but it's mainly to give you guys an indication as to how social media has actually developed and how it's become more and more important over the years. And I'm focusing on cultural theory more than marketing theory in this presentation. You'll see why, hopefully through the, uh, the process of uh, uh, the actual presentation itself. Um, now the first thing that I studied when I, was, or when I started my research was the internet and the film industry. And I started looking at the internet and the film industry because about 10 or 12 years ago, so this was the first time when movies started to use websites to, to promote the actual film itself. But there's one film in particular which stood out in, and I'm not how, sure how old you guys are, but do you remember in 1999, roundabout, which film really set the tone uh, for uh, the internet and using the internet, having a website? It made it essential to have a website for a movie. Can anyone remember which film that might have been? Any ideas? Probably too young. <laughs> you might have seen it, you probably have seen it, The Blair Witch Project. Right? Now, The Blair Witch Project cost $35,000 to make. Now, most of you guys are probably aware that it cost 10 times that to make even a small budget film. Uh, so, what was unique about this? It made $140 million at the box office, which made it, at the time, one of the top 10 grossing films of all time. At that time. Now, obviously, things have progressed since then. Uh, and what was significant was the website was visited 22 million times in the months leading up to the film. Now, why was the website visited? Was it because it was a good website and people, there was lots of interviews with the cast and uh, lots of trailers? No, it was none of that. It was because the film itself was part, or the website itself was a part of the experience of the film. In other words, it was integrated into the experience of the film. And the reason I said it's good to be in a room full of social media enthusiasts and strategists as opposed to a room full of e-marketers is because within marketing, the theory was always, let's try and add something to our marketing strategies. Let's make this an extension of our marketing strategies. And websites were being used by films as extensions to the marketing of the actual film. But with the Blair Witch Project, it was used as something which was a part of the film. So on the actual website itself, you'd visit the website. I don't think you can go there anymore because it's sort of crashed and burned now. So, uh, but if you were to go there at the time, there was notes left by the cast who were actually acting in the film. Now, has everyone here seen The Blair Witch Project or aware of the actual uh, background behind it? Yeah? Three guys, or the two guys and a girl, go into uh, um, a bunch of a woods and get lost in the woods. And uh, what happens is that the only evidence which is found of their existence uh, was a videotape which was made uh, sporadically of their experience there. Now on the website there were additional uh, letters and notes uh, and information and it was almost as though the website wasn't advertising the film uh, but it was living the experience of the film. So things were happening on the website which were telling you that oh this is what's happened to these guys right now. Now this is what's happened to these guys right now. So if you wanted an update as to what was going on uh, then you'd go to the website for that. And so it created this massive buzz and excitement. Uh, now, you wouldn't go and click on a commercial and watch it 22 million times. You just wouldn't do that. You'd watch a commercial if it came on in between a television program, if it came on be before a YouTube video. 
In my case, I just mute it and walk away for a couple of minutes and then come back when it's finished. Uh, I'm not sure if that's uh, what, you, what you guys do, but that's usually the only time we see a commercial uh, when we are forced to see it. But with this particular website, people weren't being forced to see any promotional material. They were being told that this is part of the experience of the film, and they were enjoying going onto the website. And so I did a study of not just the Blair Witch Project, but all of the, uh, the top ten grossing films of that particular year. And uh, I started to assess how they were using the internet uh, to market the actual films. And apart from the Blair Witch Project, most of them were still using the traditional, let's take a website, we have to have a website and make it an extension to the product. So you have cast interviews, you have uh, trailers, uh, and things along those lines. So nothing uh, about the actual, which enhanced the experience of the movie. And that got me sort of thinking, uh, well, let's look, at, look beyond movies and let's look at this concept of internet marketing in general and how is it developing. So later on, I started to look at internet marketing models uh, and identified a number of, and this is just a, a selection of those models, of how people felt, or scholars at the time felt, um, we should be marketing on the internet uh, or using the internet as a marketing tool. So we had the value-added approach, which talked a little bit about um, providing something different with the, uh, the internet and, and, and essentially having an extension of the product on the, uh, on the internet. So it was, it was quite a traditional theory. Uh, I've highlighted the model of interactivity because that's what sort of got me going with my, my later research on uh, business and marketing ethics and, and consumer ethics, uh, specifically on the internet. And I'll talk a little bit about that towards the, uh, the end of this presentation. Uh, and then we had the integrated internet marketing model. Now, the integrated marketing model is a bit more along the Blair Witch lines, where we say, well, let's actually try and make this a, uh, a part of the experience. Let's not try and sell something to consumers. Let's try and get them to be interested in what we're selling, and let's not make it look as though we're selling anything to them. Yeah? All you guys who've got Facebook accounts, who've gone onto YouTube, uploaded videos, go on Twitter, never paid a penny and you're loving it. yeah. I only went on Facebook because Evangelist forced me to a few months ago actually. Uh, I've been studying the internet for 10 years and I refused to have a Facebook account and Evangelist, Evangelist said to me, you've got to go on Facebook, I need you there because you need to be, uh, you need to have access to it to see all my Saudi marketing stuff. And I said, okay, I'll, for, for you Evangelist, I'll do it, I'll go on Facebook. Do I regret it a few months later? Mm, it's not really my thing. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I do use it. I use it similar, in a similar way to what Evangelos does as well, for mainly promotion, uh, self-promotion, uh, as opposed to um, networking with or pe meeting people who I've not met for 20 years or whatever it might be. Um, so yes, there is a, a, a use to it. But the actual experience of Facebook and of Twitter is that you're using a product, but you're not paying for it. You don't want to pay for it, you don't expect to pay for it, and yet these companies Facebook in particular, and Google, they're, they're making money. So how are they making money? What is it that's driving them to uh, so much success? What's making their, sh their share price go up so, uh, so much in such a short period of time? So I started to get interested in, in, into the marketing models, but specifically the, the actual successful companies. I said, well, we can't just look at the marketing models, but we have to identify them in, uh, anyway. So I, I found a chap called Michael Rapper who, who tried to break down different marketing models at that particular time for, for the internet. And I didn't really find it refreshing. I wasn't inspired by it. I wasn't inspired because all I saw was somebody creating a typology of different ways in which, or different types of businesses that can exist online. And I thought, well, I don't really need a, someone to tell me that. I can sort of assume that for myself. Uh, because you go on the internet, you know what kinds of businesses are out there. So I wasn't really inspired by this. But it was useful because it created a, a classification. So it does sort of, in your own mind, tell you, okay, these are the kinds of businesses, this is how much it's expanded to, from when the internet was first just a cataloging service to, uh, to what it uh, was in 2002, uh, providing commercial uh, routes for these kinds of organizations, brokerage firms, merchants, manufacturers, affiliates, whatever it might have been. Uh, but, I, but I said, well, if I'm going to get to the heart of this, if I'm going to find out exactly how to create an effective business model for marketing on the internet, I need to understand the consumers. I need to understand the users of the internet. 